Thanks, Chairman. Our next speaker is Joe Barry. Please. The, the, the day the pipe band opened the Garda College. Thanks, Joe. Good evening, everybody. You can all hear me okay. This is a short extract from a story uh, called The Day We Opened the Garda College. Some of, some of you here would, would be familiar with this story. By January of 1964, we had accomplished a lot. We were playing pretty basic, but we were delighted with our five tunes, and we were eagerly looking forward to our first public appearance, which was to be the St. Patrick's Day Parade of 1964. Well, the town council had other ideas. The big day for Templemore was fast approaching. In Templemore, the then Minister for Justice, Charles J. Hohey, would be down to officially open the new Garda College, or training centre as it was called in those days. In spite of explaining to the council members that we were not quite ready for a first appearance, and especially for such a prestigious event, they were insistent that we had to be part of the historical day. <clears throat> the council requested that our role on the day would be to parade the minister who would be travelling by state car from the town hall to the college. <coughs> this would take place immediately after he had inspected the guard of honour. It was indeed a reasonable request and with a small amount of extra effort it would be well within our capability. Our equipment was adequate. We had just purchased six sets of Crowley pipes from the Presentation Convent in Turles, along with a set of saffron kilts and shawls. The Presentation Convent School Girls Pipe Band had been in existence for a number of years and unfortunately had fallen through for whatever reason. They had acquired the instruments and uniforms from the old Fianna Fáil Sean McDermott Band. No, we were glad of them, third hand and all as they were. We bought a set of drums from the Sean Tracy band, which were in reasonable condition. And by January of 1964, except for tunics, we were fairly well equipped. A set of 14 blazer style jackets had been ordered from a clothing firm through Tom Kevin, the local draper, who was also a member of the band committee. The clothing firm had given us an assurance that the blazers would be ready early in March in time for St. Patrick's Day. Now with the new turn of events, things had changed somewhat and in spite of Tom Kevin's best efforts, they could not guarantee that we would have them for the opening of the Garda College. Then with less than a week to go before the big event or worse situation was realised, Tom Kevin received a phone call from the firm regretting that due to circumstances beyond their control, the blazers could not be made ready. No, we had a problem. At the Monday night practice prior to the official opening, which was Friday of the same week, we discussed the situation. John O'Neill came up with an idea, which if it worked out would certainly be the answer to our dilemma. John, who came from Loch Ray to take up a position as manager in Tipperary Glass, helped set up the band and brought us the first set of pipes. He had been a piper in the Loch Ray band. He believed he would, not, he would get a positive response from the committee in Loch Ray if we requested the lend of 12 tunics. The response to John's request from Loch Ray, the Loch Ray boys was positive. They would indeed be delighted to help out and arrangements were made to have the tunics collected. <coughs> At our final practice, which was on the eve of the big day, there was an air of anxiety as we considered our part in such a high-profile event, and of course it would be our first public appearance. It was a case of going into the deep end, and we wanted everything to be spot on. We were eagerly looking forward to the set of tunics. John O'Neill, committee member, and Brooke Destel Rowe had gone to Loch Ray in the afternoon and were expected in the band room around 8 o'clock. However, when midnight came and they hadn't arrived, <coughs> it was time to get, start getting concerned. It was then that our president, Reverend Father O'Grady, 
came in and invited us into John Joe's for a drink, saying, let there be no panic, they'll be along shortly. <laughs> well, the drink was scarcely up to us when somebody shouted, they're here. We left the drinks and went out to the hall, but at the same time reminding John Joe that we would be back to finish them. <laughs> As the two lads came into the band room, they were greeted with a round of applause. They had with them 20 tunics in dark blue. We were impressed. They were traditional Piper's tunics, well tailored and in perfect condition. They would complement our saffron kilts and shawls. <clears throat> well, the big day dawned with frequent showers of sleet driven by a bitter north wind. The 11 of us that were playing assembled in the band room at 9 a.m. sharp, and John Joe, who best knew how to serve out our needs, had the kettle boiling with hot whiskies all around. <laughs> all the non-playing committee members were all assembled, as well as in their best suits. We were pleasantly surprised, surprised when Johnny MacDonald arrived with a bottle of paddy whiskey for us, compliments of the UDC and John Joe's electric kettle must have thought it was Christmas. <laughs> <coughs> After that, we got ourselves ready, tuned up our pipes and ran over our musical scores. All was now set. At 10.45, the committee wished us well and we marched out to fall in on the right flank of the Guard of Honour, which was drawn from the 2nd mid Tipperary Brigade of the old IRA and included my late father. At 11 o'clock sharp, the, the minister's car pulled at the town hall. When Charles J. emerged, he was greeted with a round of applause from the large crowd that had gathered. Commandant Con Spain was in command of the guard, and he invited the minister to inspect him. As he walked down the proud ranks, we played Let Aaron Remember. After the inspection and dismissal of the guard, we were instructed to proceed to the college ahead of the minister's car. We led off with the June, the dawning of the day, all the way down Patrick Street and onto the Mall, with rounds of applause from the many groups of people who had lined the way. On reaching the, old, on reaching the college main gate, we beheld an amazing and unfamiliar scene. The old barrack square, which for almost 150 years had been accustomed to the sight of red, khaki, grey and green clad battalions, was now witnessing history being made as 400 black clad, mem 400 black -clad members of Angarda Shia Khan stood to attention in company formation. Standing around the main gate were members of the press, officials and high-ranking members of the force. We must certainly have turned a few heads when led by drum major Shawnee Madigan, we played in with Lord Lovett's lament. All was well. We had fulfilled our task to a high degree. The guard of band took over and the ceremony commenced. <laughs> Hello again. Hello. Appropriately, just uh, 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 in addition to what I've been talking about, we have uh, a, a short performance from two members of the band.
speaker, I want to say a special word thanks to the two lads. <coughs> they ran a teacher teaching up in Calais at the moment for the county fair at the weekend. They got into the cars, they rushed down, they were from here, exactly when Joe finished, the traffic caught them up down and they went back to Calais. So they're really 